الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد ما dear children my dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today, inshallah, we'll continue the story of Yusuf, alayhi salatu salam, chapter 12. Week before last, we stopped at, I think, verse 93, when uh, Yusuf, alayhi salatu salam, gave his shirt to his brothers, and he said to them, take my shirt and put it on the face of my father, he will regain his sight. We know that he became blind because of the, <coughs> the sadness and the sorrow and the grief. He had to go through because he lost Yusuf والسلام, and now he lost Benjamin as well. And the man never complained to anybody about his internal problems. He never complained to anybody about his pain, but he was only talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله. I only complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about my grief and about my sorrow. Because no one else can help him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that the shirt of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam played three major roles in the story. And we mentioned that the first time when his brothers brought the shirt back with false blood on it to claim that the wolf devoured Yusuf. And the second time when the shirt was used to clear him from the accusation of the wife of the Aziz who claimed that he was trying to uh, seduce her or he was trying to rape her. And now the third time the shirt is going to be used to regain the sight of Jacob alayhi salatu uh, wasalam. The interesting thing here is not the same shirt. You must remember that. It's not the same shirt. Three different <laughs> shirts, three different times. So in verse 93, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اذهبوا بقميصي هذا Go with this shirt of mine فألقوه على وجه أبي Put it on the face of my father يأتي بصيرا We know that his eyes became white and, and I also mentioned last week when we have white eyes it means you have cataract but most of all that was a different uh, uh, ailment to the eye because of the grief he had to go through. يأتي بصيرة, he will regain his sight. وأتوني بأهلكم أجمعين and come back to Egypt with your family. My goodness. Come back with all your wives and children. Immigrate to Egypt, in other words. So there was no restriction on immigration at that time. So they can all go and reside in Egypt. And now in verse 94, ولما فصلت العير when the caravan left Egypt, when the caravan left Egypt, قال أبوهم إني لا أجد ريح يوسف لولا أن تفندون. Imagine where is the land of Canaan? Is the land or is the Holy Land? Is where Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan is now? And imagine the distance between. The uh, land of Canaan and Egypt. And the caravan is just about to depart from Egypt. <clears throat> and the caravan was just about to uh, depart from Egypt, and Jacob said, If, I go, if I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you now, we might think that I am demented, I'm senile, I am confused. I can smell Yusuf. I can smell Yusuf. إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ رِيحَ يُوسُفَ Every one of us has his own smell. It's like your DNA and exactly like... It's exactly like your fingerprints. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in another verse, بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَةً 
banana is the fingerprints, not the banana you eat, the, the <coughs> republic, banana republic, no. Banana, bananahu, in Arabic the word is bananahu, which means your fingerprints. So Allah is saying on the day of judgment, he has the power to restore the same person with the same identity, with, his, with the same fingerprints. So in the same way, each one of us has his own DNA, we also have our body smell, every one of us. That's why they use the police dogs to identify a criminal by sniffing, for example, a jacket, or, which might belong to anyone in the parade, and then the dog will find out which one was the culprit or the criminal. So Yusuf, <clears throat> so uh, Yaqub was saying to the family around him, they were not his brothers, uh, sorry, uh, his, his uh, children, his sons. It was the family or the families of his children, the wives and the grandchildren. So they were all under the same impression that this is an old man, he's senile, he's demented, he's feeble, he is, he's imagining things. What Rih Yusuf are you talking about? What, what sort of smell are you talking about? Oh my goodness, by Allah, you are still in your old illusion. Dalal, also a very interesting interpretation of the word Dalal, here does not mean misguidance, means love, lust, love. You are still uh, experiencing or thinking about the old love you had for Yusuf, والسلام, and that's why at the very beginning of the story, they said, Inna abana lafi mubin, surely. Our father is in a great love with Yusuf So the word Dalal here is, doesn't mean uh, being lost. It means actually you are still thinking of the old love story you had for Yusuf Old wandering illusion. You still persist in your old illusions. So, al-Bashir. When the man with the glad tidings came, when the son who had the shirt entered on Jacob's uh, presence. Bashir means someone who, who brings glad tidings, good news is known as Bashir. One of the attributes of the Prophet is Bashir, and every Prophet is known as Bashir. <coughs> I like the word Alqahu because, because of the speed. He did not say Wada'ahu, he didn't, the, the word is not wada'. Wada'a means to place. No, throw it. They were not, they were in a hurry. They've been traveling for a long time. They wanted to see uh, the happiness of the father and they wanted to see the father regaining his sight. So, alqahu ala wajhi, ala wajhihi. Throw it on his face. Fartadda basira, immediately, immediately he regained his sight. I mean, this is another miracle when you think about it. <coughs> we were talking about Isa, alayhi salam, who would give or who would uh, um, wipe on the eyes of a child, al-akma. Al-akma is a child who is born blind. There's a big difference between someone who becomes blind at old age and someone who is born blind. In Arabic, the word is akma, which means he was born blind. But blind. <coughs> so Isa salam, would wipe on the eyes of the child and the child would regain his sight by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the will of Allah. So it's not the shirt. It's not the shirt. Which meant Yaqub regain his sight. It's Allah's power, Allah's will. If Allah did not will this to happen, it wouldn't have happened. It's not your GP who make you recover. It's not the medicine who are you take, which which you are taking, which which makes you recover. No, that's why Ibrahim والسلام, said, "Wa ida maritu When I am ill, when I get ill, when I am not feeling well, it is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who makes me recover. And we need to understand this because this is part of the submission. To show your submission, you are a Muslim, you believe that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, فَرْتَدَّ basira. Now he can see immediately. No operation, no booking, no waiting list, nothing. Immediately gained, regained his sight. قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Haven't I said to you that I know from Allah what you don't know? Subhanallah, he was a prophet, he was a messenger of Allah, and he went through very, very hard and difficult time. If any of us would have been through this, we would have been, we would have lost this, we would have lost the plot, we would have been absolutely crazy and mad. 
But the man persevered patiently because he enjoyed it. For Sabr al-Jameer, he enjoyed the, 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 the patience. And he continued. He did not count how many days or how many years. And at the end, you can see what a beautiful ending to the story now. Now he's giving this message to all his children. The whole family is around him. Our father, please, ask for forgiveness for our sins, because surely we've been wrongdoers. We deliberately intended to do wrong. We planned and plotted to do wrong. Shall we auction it? We auction the phone only. Okay, right. So when, when we talk about committing sins, we are all sinners. All of us, including myself. All of us, we sin by the second. By the second. Prophet ﷺ Every son of Adam is a sinner and the best one who repents. So these people now, they repented the first time when they saw Yusuf. And they said to him, sorry, sorry. Sure, we know that Allah has raised you above all of us. Please, our brother, sorry. He said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لك. No blame on you today. Allah will forgive all your sins. خلاص, alhamdulillah. He did not blame them. He did not remind them of what they did to him or the accusation they caused when they said he is a thief. <laughs> now, Yaqub been asked because they made him suffer. It was his own children who made Yaqub suffer for all these years. So now they are saying, Ya Abana, our father, our dear father, istaghfir lana dhunubana. Ask for forgiveness for us. Inna kunna khati'in. Surely we were at fault. We planned and plotted evil. What did he say? قَالَ سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ رَبِّي I will. He didn't say yes. No. Because there are two more people in the equation. Yusuf and Benjamin. And I cannot just ask Allah to forgive you on behalf of them unless they forgive you. He was not aware of what happened there. سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ رَبِّي I will. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ because he is the most forgiving or oft forgiving, most merciful. Now, we need to understand the mercy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we turn to Allah in repentance, the word tawab, awab, those who return to Allah all the time in repentance, please, sorry. They always say sorry, and they mean it from their heart. Sorry, like Adam and Eve, sorry. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَخْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَا كُنَّنَّا مِنْ خَاسِرِينَ Musa, رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي وَاغْفِرْ لِي مَيْ لُورْدَ هَفْ رُونْجِدْ مَيْ سُولَ And if you don't forgive me, I'll be among the rules. رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي Oh, forgive me. And Jonah, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكِنْ to ourselves and to our maker, to our creator, that we have done something wrong and say sorry. <coughs> Whether to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your neighbors, to your parents, to your colleagues at work, we must be brave enough to challenge the ego and say, sorry, forgive me, please. Because if the man forgives you, the creator will forgive you. فلما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أبويه وقال دخلوا مصر إن شاء الله آمني. Now this verse 99. The story now shows us the whole family. It doesn't give us the details of they prepared for their departure and they completed the immigration forms and produced new passports. No, there was no such thing. They prepared the caravan, they packed their things, and now they moved all the way into Egypt. And they arrived now at Yusuf's presence. When they entered at uh, 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 the presence of Yusuf, he took his parents to stay with him. 
But the mother was a stepmother. The mother was not Yusuf's mother because his mother died when he was young. But according to the tradition, your stepmother is regarded as your mother. And that's why we should show respect to the stepmother. Because unfortunately in Islam, there are many Muslim families, many. They may have a stepmother <coughs> or a stepfather and the children never show any respect. And I receive a lot of complaints. You have to respect your stepmother or your stepfather. Respecting your own mother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shokra, Rafiq. Shokra. You have to respect your own mother <laughs> before you respect your stepfather or vice versa. Okay? وَقَالَتْ خُلُوا مِصْرَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ This is beautiful. He said to them, enter you all Egypt, in Allah, by the will of Allah, in peace. The only airport in the world, the only airport in the world, which has this verse written, is Egypt. It's Cairo Airport. The only airport. You see a huge sign there. It, it was placed during the time of Sadat, late President Sadat of Egypt. He put this verse there. Utkulu Misra, insha'Allah, aminin. Enter Egypt, insha'Allah, aminin. Means you are in safety and enjoying peace. If you could kindly please move forward, please, everybody, please. وَرَفَعَ أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ وَخَرُّوا لَهُ سجادة. And he raised his parents on the throne. وَخَرُّوا لَهُ سجادة. His parents and his 11 brothers <coughs> prostrated themselves to him. Can you imagine? So what is this? Have we heard this before? You the, dream? the dream. The dream. What was the dream? When I saw the moon and the moon. I have seen 11 planets, Kaukab, means a planet, not star. Star in Arabic means Najm. And the sun and the moon, I saw them all prostrating themselves to me. Now, the conclusion or the, con the, the dream became reality. And he raised his parents high on the throne. And they fell down in prostration to him. And what did he say? Or before him? He said, oh my father, this is the fulfillment of my dream, which I saw. Allah made it true. قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّي حَقَّ My Lord has made it true. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي And he been very good and very kind to me إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ When you got me out of the prison. وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْ And brought you from the desert. You see the comparison? He regarded coming out of the prison is like his family coming out from the desert into a very prosperous country. من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي. After Satan managed to create division between me and my brothers. This is very interesting. He is not blaming his brothers. He is blaming Satan. So beautiful. He didn't say even my brothers were naughty or nasty or bad. No. He said Satan was the cause of the problem. من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي. إِنَّ رَبِّي لَطِيفٌ لِمَا يَشَاءُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Yusuf السلام, used one of the attributes of Allah here which is Al-Latif. Al-Latif. Latif means someone who is so gentle that everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed when it happened and took place it was so mild or so easy to go through. Or he helped him to go through it. For example, God forbid, God might have written for someone that he will have a major car accident and the car would be completely destroyed, written off. But the person will come out of the car intact, no scratch on his face or his leg, nothing. Latif, he destined the accident, but he also decided that this person will not be injured. So when the brothers, at the very beginning of the story, thought of getting rid of him, killing him or leaving him in the desert to die, they changed their mind, they, he went into the well. The well was not full of water, he didn't get drowned. He did not catch cold. When he was captured or, or taken as slave, they didn't sell him to someone who was nasty and bad. They sold him to the Aziz. When the women tried to seduce him, he preferred to go into the prison. The wine waiter forgot about Yusuf completely. 
That was Allah's plan. Because Allah wanted Yusuf to come out at a time when Egypt would be in need of him. And then the king appointed him in charge of all the ration, etc., etc., to the end of the story. So Latif, he used the attribute Latif. Inna Rabbi Latifun lima yasha. Inna huwa al-alim al-hakim. Sure, he is full of knowledge and wisdom. Then he's giving now a speech, which is known as the speech of the throne. Whenever there is a new king appointed, he gives a speech. You remember the king's speech, the film called <coughs> King's Speech? Yes, the one who used to stutter. Yes? Now Yusuf is going to say something very interesting now. Rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulki wa allamtani min ta'wil al-ahadith. Oh my Lord, you have indeed bestowed on me some power. وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ And you taught me how to interpret dreams. فَاطِرَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You are the creator of heavens and earth. أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ You are my protector, my friend, my guardian in this life and the hereafter. تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا Imagine. تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ Make me die as a Muslim. Yusuf. Yusuf, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Ibrahim, is praying to die as a Muslim. What about us? How often do we pray like that? Tawafani Musliman, walhiqni bis salihin. Please let me join the righteous. Let me, when I die, I'll be among the righteous. What sort of people these people were? We are nothing compared to them. And look at their humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are only worried about our provisions, our, our work, our money, our children. And look at these people. They are worried about the way in which they will die and where they will go at the end and with whom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why there is a Allahumma ahina ala al-Islam wa amitna ala al-Islam wa adkhinna al-jannata dar as-salam bi ghayri hisabin wala adabin wala su'al. Please Allah make us live as Muslims and die as Muslims and admit us to the gardens of peace and make peace the greeting by the angels when we leave this life. <coughs> the story is finished. But is it a story? It is rather a recital of forces and motives, thoughts and feelings, complications and results, ordinary not seen by men. <coughs> However, much they concert their plans and unite their forces, whatever dark plots they back with all their resources, the plan of Allah works irresistibly and sweeps away all their <coughs> plans and the plots. The good win through in the end. But not always as they planned. The evil are foiled. And often, their very plots help the good. What did the brothers desire in trying to get rid of Joseph? And what actually happened? How the courtier's wife, encouraged by the corrupt women of her acquaintance, tried, to fa tried and failed to seduce Yusuf, and how Allah listened to his prayer and saved him from her vile designs. How wrong was it of the cupbearer to forget Joseph? And yet, how his very forgot forgetfulness kept Joseph safe and undisturbed in prison until the day came when he should tackle the great problems of Pharaoh's kingdom. With every character in the story, there are problems. And the whole is beautifully balanced picture of the working of Allah's providence in man's checkered destiny. And this is the whole message. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the Quran more. And hopefully, inshallah, we will learn from the example of Yusuf, of his brothers and his father, to mend our relations with our families. Please, please, if you are not talking to your brothers or to your uncles or to your parents or to your wives or husband, please go back, reconcile, say sorry. And do not start to create any sort of dialogue reminding them of what evil they did to you or what you did to them. No, forget about everything and start 
a clean slate, please. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, inshallah. Can we, can we move forward? Mahmoud, can you do collecting for 